There are four main classes of sedimentary rock. Now be sure not to confuse class with type. Type would be the individual names. So each one of these rocks are a different name, aka a different type of sedimentary rock. But each one of these types of sedimentary rocks belong to individual classes. So these are four examples of sedimentary rocks that you have in your rock boxes, and each one comes from one of each type of the classes of sedimentary rocks. Now there are four main classes of sedimentary rocks. Those are clastic sedimentary rocks, which form from fragments and pieces of pre-existing rocks that are held together by some kind of cement. So here we have an example right here of a clastic sedimentary rock. The next class of sedimentary rock is chemical sedimentary rocks. Now those are composed of grains that precipitate from some kind of fluid solution, typically water. So here we have an example of a chemical sedimentary rock, which is travertine. The third class of sedimentary rock are biochemical sedimentary rocks, which are composed of minerals that are originally extracted or precipitated or created by organisms that form shells. So typically these are marine organisms, so organisms that dwell in ocean and marine environments. So this is an example of a biochemical sedimentary rock, and this is limestone. And the last class of sedimentary rock are organic sedimentary rocks. Now those contain organic chemicals that are derived from the bodies of organisms. So essentially they're created by decayed and decomposed organic matter, generally speaking some sort of vegetation. Each one of these classes of sedimentary rocks are identified in very unique ways. The most common and most ubiquitous type of sedimentary rock are your clastic sedimentary rocks. So here is a good example of a clastic sedimentary rock. Now in your rock box, this is our coast sandstone. I gave that first example on your rock data sheet for this week. Now, Arco sandstone is a type of sandstone. Now, sandstone is mainly composed of quartz grains. Now, Arco sandstone is a special type of sandstone that contains at least 25% or more of feldspar grains. So as you can see, this Arco sandstone looks very close and similar to another type of rock that we have looked at last week in our rock and mineral box, and that is granite. So here we have a nice red pinkish granite, which is an igneous rock, remember? It forms in intrusive environments, which means it cools very slowly in the interior of the earth from some kind of melt. And then here we have our clastic sedimentary rock. Now you're probably like, how do I tell the difference between the two? Well, if you look very closely at these rocks, what do you notice is the difference? Maybe it's hard to see on this camera. But the most noticeable difference is that this granite contains all these black specks, these black minerals. Now those are mainly a type of mica, which is biotite. And as you can see, this Arco sandstone does not really contain any of those black platy minerals. Remember, clastic sedimentary rocks are, are formed by fragments and pieces of pre-existing material. And we know those fragments and pieces, aka sediment, that were once free-flowing fragments and pieces that were transported through some kind of fluid that were weathered off from some pre-existing rock formation that was formed maybe in situ and then maybe exposed on the, on the surface of the earth. 
So what happens during the weathering processes is that all these little pieces of biotite will essentially dissolve so small that you can't really see them from just your naked eye. So what's left are some of those potassium feldspar grains and obviously those very resistant and harder quartz grains. So if you look very closely at this rock in comparison to all, so this granite, if you look at the texture aside from the composition which I've just mentioned, each one of these grains in here do not look like they are interlocked like this igneous rock right here. The next class of sedimentary rock would be our chemical sedimentary rocks. Now these are formed from evaporation from some kind of fluid, generally some kind of river or stream, groundwater, or some kind of lake. So what happens is, is, is that fluid slowly evaporates. The water will evaporate, obviously, and then go into Earth's atmosphere, and it leaves behind these ions that were once dissolved inside the fluid in the first place. This is a good example of a chemical sedimentary rock travertine, which forms from waters that are rich in calcium carbonate. But travertine forms in terrestrial environments, which means that they are waters that are rich in calcium and CO3 ions. The next class of sedimentary rock would be our biochemical sedimentary rocks, which are formed from the remains of marine organisms. Now the material that forms this limestone is purely calcium carbonate, CaCO3, which is formed by the organisms in the first place as they are growing their shells. So this is just an accumulation of all their shells that have slowly dissolved through time and eventually then formed this limestone as it was buried and compacted through time. Now you can also get some really fossil heavy limestones. So this is a very fine grain limestone, but you can also get some really fossil heavy limestones where you can actually make out each one of those marine organisms. The last type of sedimentary rock, the last class, is our organic sedimentary rocks. And we only really have one major type and that is coal. So in your box, I believe this is a piece of anthracite coal, which essentially means that you can make out maybe some of the layers that are in here, but this is formed after millions and millions of years of decomposing and decaying vegetation.